hello and welcome to my youtube channel i'm sd i'm here with a new video this video is going to be about my micro focus stacking photography setup why micro and not macro because i had a microscope objective lens attached to my dslr camera if you want to know more about the difference between macro micro and close-up photography i do have another video where i explain the differences in this video i'm going to focus on talking about my setup and all the parts that were in my setup all the adapters and everything this was altogether my third setup. I started in 2016 with my first macro setup, which was a smartphone. And I have another video about that setup. Um, then I switched to DSLR in 2019 and I was using DSLR extension tubes, reverse rings. I do have a video about this setup also. So um, the third setup, I'm not using it at the moment, but I did start using it um, several months after I had my transitional setup. So it was in 2019, the end of 2019, I want to say. I may not be exact, but it was either the beginning of 2020 or the end of 2019. And I already had a place for my setup. I had a small table where I had my lights, which were desk lights with um, LED light bulbs, uh, 12 watts each and so they have worked pretty nice so i kept on using them i already um, had a way to have my whole setup sturdy so i don't have vibrations and i don't have shake during my focus stacks and so the parts that i needed really were several adapters and the microscope objective now i want to say that there is a difference between regular macro photography or micro photography like single shot one and focus stacking so the setup that i built was specifically for focus stacking a lot of people believe that the only way to do micro photography or high magnification photography is when you get expensive equipment and my way is actually super affordable as cheap as can be really because i am working around buying things i don't buy the super expensive option i buy the affordable option and this is a great thing about it nowadays there are options available which if you look and if you search you can find pretty affordable stuff so I'm gonna go through um, all the parts of my micro setup and I'm gonna talk about each one a little bit more I uh, was using my Canon DSLR camera Canon EOS T6S or 760D on the camera I attached a bellows on the bellows I attached um, adapter ring from Canon to M42 then of course I attached the M42 extension tube and on the extension tube I had the RMS adapter and then finally I had the microscope objective lens attached to it so those are the parts some people ask me every now and again if it is micro photography why don't you just attach your camera to a microscope and have it simple well actually that doesn't make it simple in any way and for focus stacking that would not work for focus stacking I need to be able to move the lens further or closer to the subject I will talk about focus stacking in another video and softwares and how it works but for now I'm just gonna say that I need to be able to move the lens so vital part of a focus stacking setup is a rail Usually it's called a macro rail because it is used together with macro and micro photography. When it comes to macro rail, there are um, three main types. There are digital macro rails, there are manual macro rails, and there are mechanical macro rails. And so uh, with the phone, I had the digital macro rail. Then I moved to manual macro rail and I never really used uh, mechanical macro rail because as you can assume, the motorized ones are the most expensive ones. They, they can really, really get pricey. I knew from the beginning that I'm not gonna invest in that. It just doesn't make sense for me to spend all those money and I don't have that sort of money. I don't shoot only macro photography. I love macro photography, but I do actually earn money doing event photography and different types of photography not macro so investing in something expensive really is not it's not the right thing for me so to avoid that what i did is i got bellows and that's what allows me to adjust the lens now also i needed it to be sturdy and since i tried the macro rail before on a tripod that's not sturdy enough so i ended up getting a vise the vise is quite heavy i just put it on my table my little table or the surface that i'm using and it's 
grabbing the bellows and it's holding them really really tight so it is a pretty sturdy assembly for a lot less money on top of the bellows i do have a um, camera specific adapter so the bellows is for canon on one end and it is for canon on the other end and so i had attached m42 adapter and i had an extension tube now the reason i was using those parts is because i needed at least 160 millimeters distance from uh, the sensor of the camera to where the microscope objective is this was because that was the type of microscope objective i selected and it is it is tricky especially at the beginning you gotta make sure that all the parts match you gotta think one step ahead in a way to make sure that they will match your specific setup so the bellows and the um, Canon so M42 adapter then um, M42 extension and then on M42 extension I had RMS adapter and then finally I had the microscope objective at the very end now the one I picked was uh, four times magnification it is a uh, Finite objective. There are two main types. There are infinite and finite microscope objectives. The main difference is that um, infinite ones they actually need the camera lens attached as well. So you basically need that extra glass in between the camera and the microscope objective in order for the lens to work. The finite ones they don't need any extra glass. So the bellows they are hollow. There is nothing there. So. I was able to use them with my assembly and I was actually, you know, I was actually very happy because there, there was always this bit of doubt at the first time, you know, when you're doing it for the first time, there is always this bit of doubt. If, what if you get all the parts and they're just not working for some reason? Thankfully, they did work. I did my research. I did ask people and thankfully uh, they all worked well. And it just felt like, you know, it took forever until my microscope objective arrived because, again, I had everything, I had everything set up. All the parts, the pillows, the extension tubes, the adapters, just not the microscope objective. So when it arrived, I was just so, so happy and so excited. And I started with the four times magnification. And when it comes to microscope objectives, you can select either four times magnification, 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, 100 times. I mean, yeah, it's it's really a lot of options there. Of course, they do get more and more expensive the higher magnification you get. But I was super happy with my four times magnification. And I knew that I wanted to start with something small and gradually move to the higher magnification. I'm still hoping to one day increase the magnification and get higher and higher and closer and closer. And this is what working with this setup was like. I am on my small white table. Of course, like every focus stack, this one does require patience, time, devotion. And you can see that I am taking my time, slowly adjusting the bellows, moving the lens forward. Bit by bit, so I can get the focus that I need. and capturing more and more frames for the focus stack. I was using my wireless shutter release I had a lot of tiny boxes I do I'm a little bit obsessed with tiny boxes but I do find them very useful when it comes to macro uh, setups and micro setups because you have a lot of tiny things tiny parts that you can store like um, your new subjects to photograph your old subjects to photograph little parts that you will need like this tiny part here which I'm using for adjustment of my helping hands of course I am using the helping hands again and um, I made adjustment to them because another way of doing macro photography and micro photography is if you have the subject moving other than the camera so basically your camera is steady but you put the subject on helping hands and on macro rail and I have a video where I'm adjusting my helping hands so you can put them on the macro rail and try it this way for some people this way works a lot better lights are very very important you need strong lights but 
also you need to make sure that you're using good diffusers um, subjects are so tiny and sometimes the light is super concentrated in one spot and you need to make sure that it is um, distributed evenly and you get even light so diffusers are very very important for that comparing all the three setups um, the one with the microscope objective the micro setup is the nicest one i've used the sharpness is the highest with this setup and i'm really really happy with this microscope objective lens which is only about 26 dollars they can get super expensive too but you don't have to buy the expensive ones this one that i'm using is really really good for the price and you can have a look at the photos that i focus tagged with this setup i'm gonna link them either in the description or in my blog post so you can have a look at the quality right now i i'm at a different place and um, i started slowly building a different macro macro setup which is a step back because i'm not using microscope objectives i am kind of back to extension tubes and reverse rings and i will have another video talking about my current setup but altogether the micro setup the one involving a microscope objective has been my favorite setup so far and i am looking forward to continuing work with microscope objectives common thing that you will see with my setups is that they are as affordable as can be i do want to make those videos to tell people that you don't have to be restricted you don't have to think that the only way to get a setup is invest a lot of money because parts can get pricey but they're not your only options and my option is to have a um, micro setup on a budget really I think that's all that I wanted to say in this video. If I miss something, I will try to add it to my blog post, which is going to be in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.